Hello guys, in this video I am going to create an app called Scratch Card. This is a beginner's level project. So come, let's start doing it. Click on start new project. I am going to give the project name as Scratch Card. Remember you must not leave any spaces in between while creating a project name. Double click on it to open the designer window. This is where we are going to decide the look and feel of our app. I'm going to change the screen one font now. I'm going to display my app name here. So under properties, I'm going to change the title as scratch card. And then if you want, you can change the theme. And also change its alignment to center so that whatever we drag and drop into the viewer screen will get aligned at the center. Now I'm going to add a label component here which is used for displaying a simple message which is scratch the card to find the hidden image. You can give anything as you wish. So below this label, I'm going to add my image. For that, I'm going to drag and drop a canvas component, which will be available under drawing and animation and palette window. And also change the canvas properties to fill parent so that it occupies the entire screen. Changing the height and width to fill parent. So inside this canvas, whatever image I want to add, you can download it from Google and straight away use it. I have already downloaded, so I'm going to use my own image. So I'm going to change the background image of this canvas as, I'll upload one that is already available, which is... So I've added a Timon and Pumba image in my designer window. So that's it. We have created a designer window. So at first, whenever the user opens my image, I want the entire screen. That is, I want to occupy the entire canvas with a white paint. In order to program that, First, click on screen 1. As soon as the screen 1 is initialized by the user, I want to paint the entire ca canvas with white color. Click on canvas 1. Go to the setter blocks, which are usually dark green in color. Drag and drop set canvas 1 paint color. And I'm going to give white color to it. Click on colors and select white from the available palette of colors. And then I'm going to ask the canvas to draw a bigger circle. I'm going to give the x and y coordinate values as 0, 0, which means the top left corner in the canvas. 0, 0 in MIT App Inventor means that is the top left corner. So from that corner, I'm going to fill the entire screen with white color. So I'm going to give a relatively larger value to the radius. So I'm going to give a radius value of, let's say, 5000.
So these two steps needs to take place whenever the user initializes this particular screen one. Now let us program what must happen when the user touches the canvas as well as drags his finger across the screen. For that, click on canvas. You will find an event handler for when canvas is touched. So when canvas is touched by the user, at that point alone, that is initially a white color paint will, um, you know, will be hiding this image. So initially the user can see only the white color. So whenever he points his finger, he touches anywhere on the screen, at that point alone, that white paint needs to be erased and the background image must be visible, right? So I need to set the paint color previously in order to make, uh, you know, in order to give the feeling to the user that the paint is actually getting erased. I'm going to do a simple procedure, which is click on canvas one. Drag and drop a set canvas one paint color. See, I'm going to connect it within screen one as initialized event handler. Not in the reason canvas is touched. I'll tell you why in the later part. Because, you know, when I add this separately to canvas is touched, when I set the paint color separately to the canvas is touched, again, I need to program this entire thing where what must happen when the canvas is dragged. So I'm straight away going to add it in when screen one is initialized event handler. And from the color palette, I'm going to add this block called make color. Click on the cog wheel to add one more value. So give the first three blocks value as 255 and the last value as zero. So the first three values denotes the RGB values. The mixture of 255, 255, and RGB gives a white color. And the last value of zero denotes how much opaque that particular color is going to be displayed. So when zero, when I give the value of zero, it means that value is totally transparent. When I give the value as 255, that value is totally opaque. I want it to be transparent so that we can actually erase the white paint. When canvas is touched. Drag and drop the block call when um, call canvas to draw circle and I'm going to give the x and y coordinate values which is the uh, according to the x and y position the user is actually pressing his finger. So get x value from the user as well as get y value from the user and from that x and y values where the radius of um, let's say 25 the canvas is going to draw circle I'm giving the value of fill as true because uh, whatever value we have given previously the paint color we have given and that particular value will get filled inside that circle Now let us program for what must happen when canvas is dragged. When canvas is dragged, I'm going to set the line width. Set the line width of the canvas as anything, let's say 30. 
and then again now this time it is going to draw a line not circle or arc and anything with x1 y1 x2 y2 values in it according to the x and y values obtained from the user So that's it. We have come to the end of this project. So let's have a look at the output. Here on the top you can find the label telling the message scratch the card to find the hidden image. When the user actually points his finger on the canvas screen, you can see the canvas draws a circle with a radius of 25. But when the user tries to drag his finger on the canvas with a line width of 30 the canvas draws a circle according to the x and y coordinate position of the user's finger so that's it We have made our own scratch card. If you have any doubts, please send a mail to futureboards at gmail.com.